four out of seven objectives against Mobile Zane. That gives you a very good idea of uh, kind of the disparity we see in game one. But now it's time to switch sides. Fcon on blue, C9 on red. We're getting almost the exact same opening bands with a bit of deviation, right? Fcon opting to take out the Arlet yep. instead. So now with the Loyi Arlet chip as well as Harif being thrown right into the banding pool, does C9 want to go for a little bit of a respect ban here? Do they do, do they identify that the Fredrin is going to be pretty annoying? Or is it all just the fact that Dax is just doing Dax's thing? Or do they want to look for some proper answers over to the Moskov? Because Moskov have pretty much got free reign in team fights as long as Cloud9's Matilda ran out of his uh, circling eagle. So Cloud9's lineup for this upcoming game might actually focus a little bit more over to the back lines of, of, of Falcon because they don't really have an answer to that in the previous. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the uh, PX7 actually is not going to get Faramis again, or Fcon, they're the one that takes liberty of banning it, but they do have access to a Valentina first pick if they want, right? Roger is also left open if this Angela bans go through, and it will from C9, which means right now you're looking at Roger, you're looking at Matilda, looking at Valentina, Roger becomes the option for Fcon. Great hero in this meta with the war cry, and on top of that, great flex mm. pick. With the very first pick coming from Fcon with a Roger, we definitely have the idea that Cloud9 might want to retaliate with a Moskov onto their side. Understandably, for the side of Falcon, they are not that afraid of Benny. They already have probably an answer that they want to have onto the side, and probably just more on a back uh, backline kind of team comp for the side of uh, Falcon. Do they want to go for a little bit of a dive kind of game? Because maybe they just want to focus on early game and try to snowball out of control. Uh, I suppose. We have to see the rest of the draft right now. Backline jumps. Uh, at least for the side of... Yeah, I mean, for, for, the, for C9, right? At least you have some late game uh, insurance, right? You have a, a Swiss Army Knife with the Valentina. You have the Moskov, which you kind of take took away from Benny if this is going to be a Roger Jungle. But instant Terizla and Ruby. So Fcon, they're not hiding anything, right? Terizla XP, Ruby Roam. I've seen examples of certain teams putting Terizla mid, but I'm, I would hope that's not the case. It is a very honest draft of Fcon, but it also means that they have an abundance of setup to allow this Roger to kind of activate in mm -hmm. team fights. So, going on with the first three core picks from uh, from Falcon, they have already established that they definitely want to play for a lot more team fights, right? They they want to look for crowd control. They will want to look at all the kind of jazz. So for Cloud Nine, they will probably want oh. to respond with mages that plays in a uh, in an AOE view or perhaps someone with. Uh, immaculate high ground heroes such as Yeev as well as Fasa, which we have seen a resurgence of, might one might be one of the few priority bands from Cloud9. So we see the alpha again for more mobile Zane for C9. Uh, right now, Fcon still have not picked a mid laners yet. We are not really sure if this is going to be a Dax Roger or it's going to be a Benny Roger. If you want to ban heroes right now, I think Cloud9 will be probably looking at mid laners, trying to limit what PX7 has. I'm looking at Novaria right off the bat because Novaria for, for Fcon is such a good pick with the Astro Echo. You magnified hitboxes, not just for Terizla, but also for Ruby, enabling uh, great catches. But they are also forced to ban on the Aurora because Aurora in their previous game is just so annoying. Stopping dies from people like Mobile Zane and stopping C9 uh, from playing this I run in your face and I roll you over. It is not possible when the Aurora is there to freeze So you. lane priority is definitely something that we have talked about uh, pre-game of game number one. And with a Valentina right, uh, right here from the side of C9, Falcon, they do have quite a bit of uh, cho uh, choices they would want to go for. They still have a little bit of uh, flex options, as Husky has mentioned, with the Terizla in the mid being one of the possible uh, possible thing. And if that's actually going to be the case, will Ruby also going to be flexed over the EXP? Or is it already solidified over to the uh, to the roam role? I, I mean, if you have a Terizla, it's probably roam, right? But with this E, the ban, it does... It does kind of play into what my speculation is. Uh, I believe that Falcons have played Terizla mm -hmm. mid before. It is, I I wouldn't say it's an ideal pick, but it basically acts as a sandbag, right? You just a lot of Terizla. I'm not gonna go down early on. I can rotate easily to join fights, and I do the exact same thing of setting up uh, for uh, for team fights. So Baraz is gonna be the choice now. The X gets banned up by Fcon. Baraz is still one of the 
few picks that has a guaranteed crowd control and the suppression allows you to easily win objective fights and keep targets under che uh, in check. But the Farsa actually is the choice. So Farsa mid, we're going to get the Roger jungle, and that means it's a ruby goalie. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that Cloud9 didn't focus on high a uh, high ground high ground mage that excels in team fights. In fact, uh, in fact, going over to uh, the band on Edith is definitely something relatively surprising from me. But Falcon picking up the Farsa is uh, is definitely fits in their, into their MO. And when it comes down to picking out the Florin, it works perfectly when it comes down to uh, com comes down for the Terizla as well as the Ruby. We're not really just looking at the fact that there is global presence, but the shred away of anti-heal potential from uh, Scott 9 using uh, those glowing wands or Dominus Eyes, being sh shredding all of those debuffs, definitely great to see. I think on top of that is also the fact that Cloud9 hasn't picked their Roma just yet. They're keeping it for last. And Florian would have been a great option for heroes like this Alpha, right? You basically allow the Alpha to stay alive a lot longer in team fights in the early phase and uh, just enable that snowballing cap uh, capability. So I think FCON, they definitely ran into this very well. And if this Roger gets a hit, it is going to be quite a mess uh, for Cloud9 to deal with, right? Because I, I don't think Valentin and Moscow would want to deal with a, a raging Lycan that is ahead in that early game. Yep. I mean, I, I think that Cloud9 may not be that afraid of this uh, this Roger this early into the game, right? I mean, his claws definitely would not be as sharp as uh, later into the game, especially since we are looking at the Roger going up against a Moskov, which understandably would have a lot of a tougher time to actually just snowball out the control. But, uh, okay, I completely forgot about this thing, possible thing. It's a ruby, yeah. it's a ruby <laughs> go. Yeah, it's a, it's I, a ruby I, go. Uh, I mean, yay! <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what the Ruby Gold okay. wants to do is just it's just a sad yeah. fact, right? Like, it's, it's like it's a Terrista. Like Basically, side lanes for Fcon. Yeah, I mean, even Terrista side lane, right? Like, both, both side lanes for uh, Falcons is just sandbag. You know, you don't leave the lane. You don't take me down. I keep my structures alive. Uh, and that's the modus operandi. But of course, Cloud9, they're going to take priority over the Little Wanderer. Good coverage early on. It's all about to see whether Moba Zane gets ahead first or... Uh, it's or it's going to be Dax. Who is going to Quantum Charge instead of the Warcry? Moba Zane taking Killing Spree Ooh. of all things. I actually, now that I think about it, it's actually pretty nice to see that Roger is going over to the jungle instead. Especially since if he's going to be paired up with this Moskov, he's definitely not going to be getting that Snowball uh, factor into the game that early. Especially since they uh, their team definitely goes around this uh, Roger and the Fasa for damage in the early stages. So getting this Roger out of the gold lane is definitely going to be fine. And especially since we are looking at the roaming trio of Florin as well as Farsa, this Roger can stay alive throughout all of these situations and he can still deal some mean damage as you can see in the middle lane already threatening Mark QT one minute and 30 seconds into the game. Very good patience. Dax waited for Mark QT to walk as close as possible. Four start the flicker would have been nice if he got first blood, but either way, Dax himself Single-handedly taking out space in, in this bush. It's not the easiest for Cloud9 to walk up forward, though Mobile Zane has the experience advantage. So if he drags this long enough, he's going to be at level 5, and that's going to give him the edge in securing this turtle fight. Uh, both teams, they want that level 4 on that mid and XP lane. I feel that Cloud9's lineup right now have pretty much the same kind of problems in the previous game, right? When it comes down to uh, jumping over to the back lines of Falcon. Can they even catch anyone at this point? But for now, that is welcome from, from, from Milo, connected down onto, uh, onto Royal Milk. And unfortunately for them, Royal Milk finds himself taken down. Dax is going to be the next one onto the chopping block, while Cloud9 does the same thing as game number one, bring good amount of people down while taking the turtle. Very well executed by Cloud9. Falcon sees both again, tunnel visioning, and Spear of Destruction connects from basic as a free kill delivered to the Moscow. Best case scenario for Cloud9. And just like game one, they're off to a great start. 2k gold advantage, just like that. Especially since we want to see a Roger st uh, steam rolling out of control. This is not the game, uh, this is not the result that Falcon essentially would want to see. We want to address a couple of. Uh, we want. We definitely want to address a couple of issues for both teams and what they want to uh, initially achieve in the stage.
right? Falcon Esports, they won their early game yeah. using uh, using the Roger as well as the Farsa. But in the meantime, Cloud9, they want to completely destroy the side lanes, right? Uh, we, especially when it comes down to Moskov going up against Ruby. Moskov is definitely going to have a great time, considering the fact that he's currently 2.3k gold on uh, 2.3k gold in terms of economy. And Ruby somehow still managing to get 2k for himself. I mean, again, Ruby, Benny is going to be a sandbag this entire game. As long as you don't lose that top tier one and you are able to lock your opponents in lane, that is good enough. Although for basic, he has the ultimate, so he can navigate cross map if he is needed. Uh, right now, I think they've been... I'm not sure if they were able to steal the purple buff away uh, from Dax. And if they were able to, uh, then it means that Dax is just going to have a rough time just like the previous game, right? Mobile Zane is three levels ahead of him at this point of time. Are we going to be seeing a repeat? of game number one. That is a, always going to be the question for now. As 15 seconds, uh, as we are going to be looking at the turtle in 15 seconds, Cloud9 radies themselves up by getting quite a bit of control in the river. Down at the bottom though, Royal Milk with a nice little flicker though. He makes sure that he's going to be out of sight and out of mind from Cloud9. Milo himself also expended his own. Yeah, but oh wow. Got PX7 in the jungle. The rotation from Cloud9 is just on point, and the fact that Milo, Mielo got out means that Falcon Esports, they used all that for nothing. And even losing their own mid laner in the process. Second death for the Farsa. Uh, Turtle is now up on the top side, and I don't see a way for Falcon Esports to contest. No, uh, not at all. I think that contesting this is going to be a death wish, and especially since they are not getting control of their own jungle as well, as you can oh, see. Man. The Spear of Destruction connects down on the floor and brings him down preemptively. PX7 hides himself right under the nose of the turret, and he's going to be safe and sound while unleashing his feathered air strike. Cloud9, they readies themselves for the turtle, albeit with Cold World having only half HP, he should still be dominating enough to eventually jump right in if he really needs to. Yeah, this Grok is a big problem. It's the wall, it's the crowd control. I'm offended, the connected down on the Moba Zane, brings him down pre uh, almost immediately. Dax takes the turtle and managing to contest for that. Kowal immediately flickers himself out of the way and he's going to be safe and sound for now, or maybe not, as PS7 wow. unleashes death coming in with the oh Fender my goodness. airstrike. Base is going to be the next one on the chopping block as well, as Dax brings him down preemptively too. What a turnaround for Falcons. First of all, Flicker, I'm offended, takes down Moba Zane, secures the turtle for Falcons. And a feather air strike underneath the tier one to secure three more. That's recovery. Falcons are complete, completely stopped, completely negated the lead the Cloud9 got after the first turtle. And Daxi wants lead more. Lead means nothing to the eyes of Falcon Esports. In the meantime, the Spear of Destruction is just going to be connecting down to Kid X while the basic is just going to be focusing himself on Dex. But somehow Dex is going to be running away just fine. Hey. But Benny, he actually went in for the offended, which actually pulled the enemy closer to make Dex. So unfortunately now, Benny is went against the world. Cloud9 managed to clap back in that small, tiny, little problem of Falcon Esports. No, Benny saved Dax, but Mark QT chased him down. He stole Dax's ultimate. He became the Lycan himself to get the kill. So Cloud9 again punishing, but this is the replay after the second turtle fight, right? Very good coordination for Falcon Seasport. Just letting Dax get the cleanup, letting him recover, catch up to Moba Zane, at least making sure that the def deficit isn't too bad. And then Cloud9 responds in kind. Mark UT chases him down. Moba Zane again catches him on some kills. And Basic was able to find another one with the Spear of Destruction. Something that FCON gotta pay a bit of attention to though. The global presence from the side of Cloud9 is not to be messed with. Wait. But at least FCON's deficit isn't that bad. They still keep it under yep. 3k. I mean, immaculate position coming in from PX7 thus far throughout the entirety of that fight. But for now, it does seem like Cloud9 is just going to be focusing on Royal Milk again. But Mobazin got pulled in, but I'm, I'm offended. And the aggressors in turn has been taken down instead. Mobazin now suffers a 20 seconds death timer onto themselves. And Falcon Esports focuses themselves in the middle lane, wanting to bring down this first tier defense turret in the middle lane. But Mark UT is going to say no as much as possible, trying to wither down all that ballista as fast as possible. While that push in the middle lane happened, Dax focuses on the turtle and gives good economy to the rest of the team. Yeah, both teams just running it at each other with no impunity, with no regards. They just want to fight. This bomb tier 2 should go down to Fcon. This Mielo can clear it. Well, with the help of Mark Uti, it's definitely so. Again, Falcons 
keeping it within an arm's reach. In fact, a Lycan form stolen uh, by Markuti of all ultimates available. Always ensuring that there is a nice gap between themselves and Cloud9. Falcon Esports is just pulling all of these gameplay as well as all these macro play just very effectively. They make sure that traits are traits. If they lose anyone, they will want to find something to recover from it altogether. So Falcon Esports, even though that even from the previous game, right? We have seen before time and time again. They lose some members, but they will find another way to get themselves back on track. Yeah. And Cloud9, uh, after that skirmish, realizes that, man, we cannot one-shot Royal Milk uh, or nope. anymore. No They're gonna try. But looks like they are still definitely gonna be trying, after all. They used quite a bit onto Royal oh. Milk, though. But now Royal Milk immediately jumping in for his uh, his quick little ultimate, but doesn't seem like uh, the penalty zone actually did do anything at all. <laughs> Melo misses the Daytona's welcome. Cold War's power of nature basically makes him CC immune to the penalty zone. So both teams just have to call it quits. You know, they we tried, we tried, but nothing worked out. Probably get, get uh, probably it's time to get ready for the first Lord of the game. It's gonna be spawning on top side, which will be taken care of by Royal Milk. Teresa is one of those few heroes that, yeah, you can kill him 10 times, 20 times, but eventually he is going to skill. He is going to be useful regardless because he is the guy with the body of the smith after all. So we'll see his first Lord fight is going to be very, very important for both teams, especially if Falcons get their hands on now, it. Now, what is the game plan here for Cloud9 though? Because we have constantly been seeing Milo going in to initiate using the Dandana's Welcome. But time and time again, they don't have enough damage because they don't really quite seem to have that kind of battery to work with this kind of uh, pick-off uh, pick comp. Because Cloud9, they, they're just focusing on that time and time again and just not working. But we'll get back to that in a short bit as Basic just went in ham against PX7. I was about to get to that as well, right? Having a Moscow gives you global, sort of global presence. Spit push is very strong, and with PX7 down, Cloud9 would definitely get this lower. I don't see how Falcons can contest this. They don't have a floor out. But at the same time, Cloud9's draft has a lot more power control compared to game one. Seems like Falcons, they still want to fight? Does seem so. Milo flickers himself out, but the penalty zone did manage to connect a little bit on Cold World, but he's not going to be caring about anything because he does have the power of nature. He's going to be fine for now. Royal Milk is going to be the first one onto the chopping block, and Cloud9 understands that that is probably the most that they can get from this, and they are going to be backing off and waiting for the next few, uh, next 11 seconds for the Lord to come out. Yeah, they need, they need PX7 to be around. Dax himself does not have enough damage. You can see he was trying his best to try and get someone into execution range, but they couldn't do it. And while all of that was happening, uh, basically just took down the bottom inhibitor. So Cloud9 not only got the Lord and won a team fight, picked off crucial targets, but also gets an inhibitor under 10 minutes, uh, under 11 minutes. This is going to solidify them in the driver's seat for this game for sure. Definitely a lot more solid compared Indeed. to game one. I mean, it's a very solid back and forth game. Like Falcon Esports as well as in Cloud9, it's very clear that both of these teams are pretty much on par with one another. And unfortunately, only one team will prevail. It's either a 1 is to 1 in this best of 2 format, or it's a 2 is 0 oh in favor for Falcon Esports. But at this point in time, the script is writing for Cloud9 to be able to get themselves the ver uh, that one game against Falcon Esports to tie things up. The Lord, uh, the, the Lord is going to be marching in the bottom lane, but Cloud9, they want to merge the lanes. They want to ensure that the inhibitor turret in the middle lane will be destroyed. As such, PX7 focuses onto the Feathered Airstrike. He clears out the wave as much as possible and manages to defend. The rest of Falcon Esports now focuses on the top lane, but Cloud9, they want to get a little bit more. The Tarisla just going to be jumping in, but it doesn't seem like they will be able oh, to do no. too much from here at this point on. Moba Zane is going to be the one that goes down second, but perhaps we'll get a third one. As Falcon Esports, they're not going to be stopping just yet. They get Milo down, oh, and now on. another one when it comes what? down to it. I'm will be able to connect the other basic as well Mark Cutie. Basically was hoping that he will be able to turn things around, but Mark Cutie, he completely ditches uh, him and goes back home. Have you seen the Florian engage? Little Kid X flickers <laughs> and throws out the soul to stun both Basic and Mark Cutie and allowing uh, Benny to get the second I'm offended, pulls Basic back, kill him off. Falcons, they still lost to Inhibitor, so that's a win for Cloud9 nonetheless, but again, Falcons refusing to go down, refusing to stay down. Manages a recovery. Unfortunately, they will not be able to get the mid tier 2. Silver lining for Cloud9, but you look at the net worth for both teams, it's even. Dead even? Wow. Falcon Team Swarmers, they are definitely going to have a lot of problems when it comes down to the macro gameplay, needing to juggle the top lane and the bottom lane while trying to it score something in the middle lane. Because understandably, 
the in middle lane second tier defense turret it will do quite a bit right but yeah pretty much the replay gave us a very good idea of how the previous fight went through but now we're going to be looking at the next one as royal milk just going to be jumping in for the second hit onto the opponents and he did manage to go put out a pretty good penalty zone but was is going to be the first one taken down of falcon esports who's just going to be marching in in the middle lane cloud nine completely spread out no one can see where exactly basic is he's going to be fine and dandy for now but i don't think anyone want to fight back again yeah, and in Cloud9, the plan is very straightforward, right? We're going to start split pushing lane. We're going to start forcing it to come back to defend the base because if you don't, we're going to tear it apart. But I'm going to try to rush down the Lord as much as possible and Cold War sees this. I think Benny just got oh. caught, so... Yeah, go down. Quick little terrifying. Marcuti brings him down. The Lord, 75 HP. Dax still managed to get it in his pocket in the end of the day. But they want more. They want blood. And they're swimming in the waters. As Marcuti is just going to be going for the IMU, taking away the ultimate of Dax. Just going to be focusing down onto him as much as possible. Then a nice welcome. Just going to be connected. But in the meantime, the front lines, we do have Cold World as well as Basic. They are focusing onto Royal Milk. But Basic's HP is not looking good. He immediately jumped himself backwards. And he's going to be fine for now. The penalty Wait. zone connects to the Royal Milk. He's just going to be stuck in there. And he's probably gonna go down and the immortality pop. Cloud9, they're marching in. They will be able to take this core down if Royal Milk is Wait, not gonna Royal clear Milk things down. But where's the damage? They are able to clear the core down. There's no Mio, damage. All alone to try to bring this core down. And he's probably gonna go down no to way. the hands of Benny. Cloud9 tried to end this fast and unfortunately wasn't able to do that. And now they face the Lord marching in in the middle. Yeah, try to take a sip of royal milk, people. He comes back, festival of blood, plays spicy. One man fights off the entire Cloud9. And he healed up so much that Cloud9 just did not have the output. Once Basic got absolutely splattered by his hammer. And without Basic, there's no way Cloud9 can end the game. And especially with the lore, right? Your empowered minions allow Falcons to survive for a bit longer. Another lifeline game by Falcon and Cloud9 coming so close for the second time in a row but just not able to close it and Falcons have managed the recovery two times so, in a row. So close to tasting that sweet sweet victory for Cloud9. They want to go for that 1-1 one, one so bad but it wasn't able to. So we're just gonna be focusing on the present now. Cloud9 they did manage to make sure that the Lord did nothing to their middle lane at all. As you can see, the second tier defense turret is still standing up really tall and they're completely gonna, they're gonna be A-OK -okay about that. This, there's still about one minute until the Lord eventually appears. So both teams, they might actually want to play things a little bit more safe while still testing their distances against their opponents. Yeah, the only advantage Cloud9 has over Falcons right now is that they have the side lane inhibitors taken down. That is what's gonna, you know, prompt Falcons to defend their base every once in a while. That's something that I feel like Cloud9 should really start taking advantage mm -hmm. of. And every time Falcons wants an objective, you force them to deviate from that, right? Push the silent in, threaten with your split push potential. You have a Moskov, one of the best structure destroyers. And Cloud9, they've been able to set up the side lanes for now, which means that they've given themselves control over the entire map. At one point in time, Falcon Esports is definitely going to have a little bit of a difficulty when it comes down to clearing up waves. But uh, it does seem like we do have Ruby that is just going to be picking up a couple of good items here just to solidify more damage to actually clear waves out. Because he did manage to pick up a Sea Halberd on himself instead of the typical kind of uh, Dominus Eyes to get a little bit more defense whatsoever. So Benny as well as uh, Royal Milk, they're going to be A-OK. -okay. When it comes down to clearing wave, they got an AOE. They're all fine and dandy. Yeah, the lack of wave, wave clip definitely is going to be a slight detriment for Falcon's esports, right? It's why you see uh, Bomba Zane just got the endless battle and he's working on that Lord. That this Lord could help Cloud9 basically win mm -hmm. the game over Falcon's esports after so long. And Falcons, they know that they have to contest this. If they don't contest for this, it is probably gonna be game over. But Falcon. They're testing the opponents. They're waiting for the perfect opportunity. But the quick little reset from Cloud9, even Cloud9 themselves understand what kind of threat that they're looking out for. This game could quite literally yeah. go to anyone here. Yeah, and and ben, Benny knows this, why, which is why he's waiting to see where Basic is. But Basic has used his ultimate. This is the chance. Falcons, 
Let's see if they can make this happen. As Royal Milk takes his first stand in the front lines. He's going to be holding on to the Lord for a tad little bit. But that's the flicker as well. That as well oh. coming in from Milo. Just going to be connecting down. But no! Oh, the hills coming in from Kid X ensures that Dex will be able to stay alive for a little while longer. But in fact, it doesn't seem like they will be able to do too Wait, much. Wait, basic, basic. Now, it's just going to be Marcuni. Just going to be holding on to the back. But basically, he's just going to be jumping over to the back lines and focusing down onto the car as much as possible. They push in. It's all left with Kid X. Royal Milk and Benny is nowhere to be seen. Never mind. Royal Milk is now it's here. Is it really even going to be enough? Basically, just dealing immaculate damage over to Kid X. They want to end this oh, fast enough. But basic, it's just going to be jumping Wait. around with a split, split of health. Both them, they're going to be fine though. All of these lanes just going to be pushing right in. If, even with the Lord, Cloud9 have got nothing that could help bolster the damage of this Lord to help them to even end this game. The split push is tried and unfortunately wasn't done right. At least Basic got the last inhibitor down, but with Dex back in the game, Basic no help. They cannot end the game just yet. Falcon still hanging on. And you would think with everything that had happened, Cloud9 would have at least a gold lead, even at a point where it doesn't matter. But no, Falcon's esports are just resilient. It, it feels like they defy death itself. And again, Cloud9, the only advantage that they have is that they got the Lord. Good control for Mielo, the Flicker, Daytona's Welcome to literally stop Dax from having any effectiveness in that fight. If Dax got the Lord, it would have a completely different story. But Falcon's Esports truly trial and tested and now put in the most damning disadvantage that they've ever faced in this BO2 against Cloud9. But it really feels like recovery is just a stone throws away. It's all about that split push potential that Cloud9 could potentially just throw over at Falcon. Especially since Falcon wants to play team fight, They want to go all in as a death ball. But Falcons, I think it really boils down to information. Can they even grab all of these information? Can Banny and Royal Milk even brave all of these finest warriors in Cloud9? Walk past all of them and see is Basic even there in the team fight? Because if yep. Basic isn't there, they can't expect that Basic will be coming in from the side lanes and try to end the game sneakily. It's starting to be a bit difficult for Falcons to take care of the waves, and you're seeing it, right? The wave clear isn't exactly the best from Falcons Esports. They're feeling the heat right now. All inhibitors down, which means these minions are going to be incredibly durable. Immortality onto Mielo as well. This last Lord, Cloud9, have priority from start until finish. And if they can catch Dax one more time, I think Cloud9 surely will win this game. But what am I to say, right? Falcons have defied the impossible for so many times. Time and time again, they showed us what exactly that they are made of. But looking at limitations, Falcon Esports definitely have got all of that limitations put onto them as to how they can clear the waves, right? Even Benny uh, focused on more offensive scenario, uh, or rather offensive alternatives from the Dominus Eyes. It's, it definitely managed to help them in clearing up the waves in the, uh, 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 in the later part of the game. But 20 minutes onwards, trying to clear all of these Mega Creeps, I think that is definitely going to be well, tough. They want Dax bottom side. Doesn't seem like Dax gets oh, away. Hey, they still want him. Flicker coming in from Cold World with the wild charge, but it doesn't seem like they will be able to isolate anyone at all. As such, Falcon Esports all four men is just focusing down on him as much as possible, bringing the Grok down. Royal Wait. Milk though, he puts himself at the top lane to give more information. But Cloud9, the main part of the game, the is down crowd. on the bottom lane as Marcuti is going to be taken down now. The uh, offenders are going to be connecting down on basic as such. The Immortality is going to be taken down. Wait. And going to be him going down. Right Right now, Cloud9 did manage to bring the Lord down, sure, but we have a full four man from Falcons that will be knocking onto the door of Cloud9. Yo, Kidax with the Winter Crown baited Basic and Mark QT in, allowing Dax to turn it around. But again, like you said, Cloud9 got the Lord at least 21 minutes in. This is straight up an evolved evolve Lord. Falcons, they gotta deal with the wave. This is not gonna be easy, but at least Dax gets the mid tier too. And I mean, Falcons was able to buy so much time because Royal Milk sacrificed himself to stall out the Lord Tick as much as possible. They should have time to wither down the Lord at least and give PX7 space to clear out the side waves. I don't think that they will be able to bring the game to the end at this point in time just yet. But it is all just pretty much going to be a wet noodle fight. As now Benny is just going to be going with the armor feather with quick, quick little flicker coming from Simon Milo. He's going to be safe and sound for now. But Benny is just healing up so much. He's not going to die at all. As now Falcon is right, they do have PX7. 
Dead coming in now. The wall chat doesn't seem to be Milo. He didn't go for the dead as well. Come to the at all. Dax gets himself a mega kill. Brings Milo down. That is one of the tough front lines coming from Cloud9 that would really help them to defend this upcoming push from Falcons potentially. I cannot believe what I'm watching right now, Abstract. Benny, oh. the damage from the Ruby stacking up. Melo misses the Daytona's welcome. Basing misses the Spear of Destruction. Crucial ultimate that Cloud9 needed to land to stop Falcons. Again, good news. Cloud9 has not lost an inhibitor. Yet. It, it, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy to look at this and be like, the only reason Cloud9 has not lost the game yet is because they, they got an early inhibitor early on. Or else I think Falcons would have closed up shop like about what, 10 minutes yep, ago probably but we get to see another potential lord fight between these two teams and falcons continues to defy the odds yep, breaking every rule out there falcon esports slated to lose a couple of these team fights but somehow still managed to come back uh, time and time again but now falcon esports they did seem like they will want to get a hit down on the mobile zane as now royal milk jumps in his penalty is all connected to the mobile what? zane a very crucial take they managed just to bring two percent down from cloud nine and with the lord that will be popping up in 40 seconds with a death timer of one minute on cloud nine this is gonna be detrimental to cloud nine Absolute cinema from Falcons. Kid X, another winter crown. And Mielo had to use his ult to get away. Basic not able to get a split push going. I don't think Falcons can get an inhibitor, but they sure as hell have been able to manage the minion wave the best they can. One can still remains. Jumping on to Marcuti, but it doesn't seem like Marcuti will be faced at all. Basic's all landed. down onto, uh, onto the Terizla, but Royal Milk immediately popping up with the crown, and he's gonna be safe and sound for now. With this one Ballista, will they be able to make the dream work and bring down the first oh my goodness. inhibitor turret for this game? A comeback of a century. Can you imagine? Can you believe this? Oh Day one of the MSC group stage and we're seeing this on stream be graced by Falcon D Sports. This is what? Lord number five. Cloud9. Mobile Zane just came back to life. Can they make it there in time? I don't think it's possible. Falcon should have this in the Falcon back. Falcon playing from behind. Falcon Esports, they are well versed in playing from behind and they are not afraid of anything at all. In the meantime, the trades between Ultimate, between Milo as well as Royal Milk is just going to be ensuing, but that is not going to be the catalyst of starting a new fight. Unyielding spirits from Falcons. Now Lord finally in their hands after a grueling 20, almost 25 minutes. Just beaten and battered but not down just yet. Lord will be on the bottom side because that's where the inhibitor is down. Falcons looking to take up as much space as possible and it's Cloud9's turn to be on the defense to stick together. Falcons is just going to let the Lord Odo escort the wave and it's going to give them openings to start threatening the remaining structures on the side of Cloud9. And uh, I think Royal Mick just got his immortality back. I mean, the cooldown has already come back up. That means another life for Royal Milk, who is just man fighting Mobile Zane. Doesn't seem like Mobile Zane's damage output, though all those true damage is really doing anything at this point in time. Not we're not looking a lot of no. a, a lot of high HP heroes from the side of uh, Falcon Esports. In fact, it is just so so sustainable, and we are amplifying that with Kidex with his ultimate, and they're not afraid of anything. But for now, Grog comes in from behind. Coldwell was hoping that he will be able to get a final uh, with the wild charge, doing nicely, but four more penalties. Coming in, Royal Milk. They clean things up and Cloud9, they suck.